Hi there, THP 494 and 598. So the next step for us is now to start to think about how we build an interface to go along with what we've got going here so far. Now, we don't need a whole lot of things, right? We just need a few kind of elements to get us going. But let's start to think about how we want to put that together. Now, we can build real flat networks um, where everything is kind of spread out all together. We can also build networks that are a little bit more tidy and more concise. And it just depends on the kind of programming that you want to do. Now, depending on uh, what you're making, you might want something where it's real easy to see all the pieces. Or if you're building something a little more finished that's got a kind of tighter modular feel to it, you might want to build something that's a little more compact. We're going to look at something that is uh, somewhere in between those two things today, right? Which is A-OK. -okay. Uh, depending on your client, depending on what you're doing for yourself, you might take a different tack, but this is what we're going to kind of experiment with. Um, because this means that we get to both look at hierarchy and nesting, and I think both of those ideas are really important for us to kind of have, have access to. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to add a container. Um, and there's an exciting change here in Touch Designer, which uh, is lovely and awesome. And that is uh, that previously we needed me.parent dot par dot width or dot w excuse me and now we no longer need me we can just ask for parent dot par great so that gets us our width which is lovely we need to know our width for a particular uh, container here uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just give this a height of 20 excellent and let's shrink this down and we're going to make one more container and we're going to just copy and paste this one Right. We're going to grab this bad boy and we're going to make him 25 tall instead. And you might be saying, this is all great, Matt, but what on earth are we doing? And what we're up to here is we're going to start to think about how we build something like this. We've got a little kind of like header in here and then we've got two buttons that live here inside of our particular interface. So we're going to treat container one as our header, right? This is going to be the part that has some information about what our actual uh, control panel is good for what it's doing. And then we're going to have some buttons here as well that we can take advantage of. So how are we going to do that? First of all, naming is going to be really important. So I'm going to call this header and I'm going to call this bin one. And you know, for fun games and profit, we might as well call this header one and bin one because depending on how complicated we build something, uh, we might have multiple headers and multiple bins. Now I'm going to want some buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a button here. And it's enormous in comparison, right? I can use hierarchy to plug these two in, right? So from the bottom of bin one to the top of button one. And in fact, if we kind of like arrange these a little bit differently, it might be easier to understand what that looks like. Right, so that's how that works. So I want to go ahead and make sure that my button is no taller than bin one. So let's, in our height parameter, let's ask for the operator called bin1 and his parameter called height. That's how we'll limit the height of this particular button. Uh, and we can actually just go ahead and make him a fixed width of 74, not 754, just 74. Excellent. And let's copy paste our button here. So now I've got one more button. That's excellent. I don't see him here yet. That's all right, because what we need to do in our bin is we just need to go ahead and specify that our align is going to go left to right. So now we've got button, button. You can see here that we've got a little bit of space left. And that's because what I like to do is give this an align margin of 2. That gives us a little bit of space between our control elements. And that's wonderful. All right. So now this is going to stand in as our uh, place where we can interact with these. So a hierarchy is uh, very similar in many respects to if we just took these and dumped them inside, right? So we could even take our container here and make a copy of it, grab our buttons, copy them into, and we need to change a few things here, right? Because they don't know where bin one is. They need to know that bin one is dot slash slash one above. And now we have the same thing. But depending on the kind of way that you want to work, you know, it might be um, more frustrating to have things hidden than to have them up here flat in the network.
So this becomes a big question of how, you know, how do you want to organize your space? How do you want to start to think about um, how you're utilizing your programming environment to build things? All good questions, totally up to you. But for us today, we're just going to go ahead and use this method. I'm going to scooch these bad boys over here to the side. Perfect, lovely in every way. And I'm going to turn their displays off because I don't really care about looking at them anymore. Uh, yeah, well, that's not totally true. We have a few things that we still need to change. Okay, before we just go ahead and obscure those totally for us, let's think about what these buttons need to do for us. So first up, we need a button to be able to control the play. right? I want to be able to play and pause what's going on here with my audio file. Right, that would be lovely. And we can see here that it keeps our position uh, in our actual file. So this really is like a play pause button, right? So let's go ahead and move here inside of this button and think about how we can rearrange this. Now we've looked in buttons before. We know that uh, it does a very clever thing here over on color, right? If we were to look at how color works, there's this really killer expression, right? I'm looking at the operator called color this bad boy, and I'm looking for the integer, well, I'm actually looking for an integer out of operator i, right, state, so I'm looking for an integer of this number, plus one, and I'm going to use that as my row, and the column I'm interested in is font, right, so as that value changes, it helps me figure out what my color is supposed to be. Oh, killer, really the best thing ever, but wouldn't it be great if we also had that for text? That's what we're going to do. So all I did there was I made this viewer active, right-clicked on my column. I said add after to give me another column. And now we're, we've got a column that we can use for our on-off, roll, rollover on, rollover off, uh, to set what's going on with our text here. I think I said those backwards. Rollover and then rollover on. OK, so what does that mean? So we might imagine that when we're uh, in our off position here, we could say uh, audio pause, right? Audio play, audio pause, audio play. Now, those might not be the right terms for you. It depends on what you're building and what that looks like. But for right now, let's go ahead and use that. Here in our button, back on the text page, let's get rid of this thing button. Excellent. Let's take color, and we're going to drag that right into the dat field. Now, my column, I happen to know that I want to use column 4. That's where I want to look. And we're going to go ahead and borrow the fact that this lovely little expression shop already exists. So for us, what we're going to do here in a row is we're going to write an expression, an expression that looks like op i. And out of that, I want the channel that's called state. And I want to add one to that, right? Just like what um, we did here for color, same idea. Oof, audio pause and audio play look like they're going to be just a little bit long. So let's change these audio off and on, right? We could change the size of our buttons and then change the size of our container and uh, do lots of things, but for the sake of uh, our sanity today, let's just change the words. <laughs> okay, so now we've got this great button, and uh, when we toggle it on and off, we see its words actually change. That is spectacular. Now, over here, for my audio file in, let's go ahead and write an expression. So I want to look at button 1, and in button 1, I want to look at out 1. Right, we remember how these guys work. If we look here inside of button one, there's this thing called out one. That's really the chop that I want to look at. And I want to look at V1 as the channel in that chop. So then I need another set of brackets, and V1 is who I need to look at. OK, so now this is going to control when this plays or pauses. Whew. Swanky, looking good. OK. Now I want to use this other button over here to drive the switch. I want to use that to drive um, whether we're in line in mode or whether we're in audio file in mode. So let's go ahead and just write that expression while we're already here. So we can look at the operator 
button two, out one, whoops, and then we want to look at the channel in that called V1. Great, and that button works too. Okay, so it looks like at this point, right, so in the off position, this happens to be our uh, live input, and our on position is our audio. Okay, so let's go ahead and move in here, and let's repeat the same kind of idea. We'll make this viewer active. We're going to add a column after called text. We're going to come down here to our button, get rid of this text, specify this is our dat. We want to look in column four. We want to look in the row that's specified by the operator i. And out of i, we want the thing called state, and we want to add one to that. Whew. Okay, now all we need to, need to do is put some things in here. So in our off position, and we should be in our off position, let's double check, yeah? So what's coming out of this right now is zero. So in off, that is where we're getting our uh, live, live in. Our on position is our folder in. Let's see, that might be too, well, I don't know. Nope, that still fits. Great. So live in, folder in, live in, folder in. And you know, we might just, let's just call this playlist instead. So we've got our live in and we've got our playlist. Yeah, that looks better. So we repeated the same idea, right? So now we've got two buttons whose displays dynamically update depending on um, the state of their button. And now we can hide those. We don't need to look at them anymore. And we've got this little bad boy that does all that for us. So we're going to leave our audio on. And we should have our playlist going here. And we must just be, ooh, we're right at the end of this track, which is all empty. All right, that's maybe like a little flaw in our design, but that's OK. Oh, and we can see that we've bounced in to a new track. Excellent. OK, let's view our container here. Ah, looking pretty good so far. What's going on here? Oh, well, probably part of what's going on oh, is that we've got this other container, and we can't really see where it is. Let's turn off its color. Let's make its background color something really bright that we can see. And let's turn up its alpha. Ah, and now we can see that the only place we can really click on these buttons is right up here, because this thing is in the way. OK, so uh, what gives? Uh, how, do we, how do we think about that? Well, the first thing we might do is we might come up here. And in our container, let's go ahead and set our align mode to top to bottom. Oh, there we go. Now they're actually separated. Let's uh, specify that their align margin is 2 because I like to have a little bit of space between these things. Lovely. And now let's go ahead and just make sure that we know exactly the order that we want them in. So I want our header here to be in the zero position, and I'd like my bin to be in the one position. OK. Now I don't want this fuchsia background. Um, so let's just, well, let's leave that for right now, because we're going to change that a whole lot. But first things first, let's go ahead and just um, fix this thing inside. So here inside, let's drop down uh, a text top, and let's attach that to a null. And we'll call the null BG. And let's extract a little bit of information about our parent. Parent uh, par width parent par height. Excellent. I know that I probably want my text to be more like 12-ish in size, right? Yeah, probably. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use another trick that we have, right? Which is I'm going to add a table. And I'm going to use my table to specify this as my dat for my text, which means when I get rid of this, now all I need to think about, rather than noodling around in here and trying to find the right place, 
I can just go ahead and change this text dat, or excuse me, this table dat, and it will go ahead and fix this. Now, if we come out here, we still don't see it. Well, that's because we still need to go to our panel, and for our background top dot slash bg, we need to still need to specify that inside of this, the thing called bg is what we're actually looking for. And there we go. Now, this is pretty good, except of this for, for this like terrifying uh, fuchsia magenta fuchsia. Uh, <laughs> Um, shenanigan here, right? Like that's that's crazy. Well, we're going to go ahead and rely on our modules again to start to think about how we might uh, make a simpler or better way of storing some of these things. Now, in this particular example, this is um, going to be extra work for what we're doing, and that's okay. The reason we're doing a little bit of extra work now is to try to kind of wrap our heads around why we might want to do the extra work if we had something kind of a little more big and a little more unwieldy that we were kind of trying to manipulate. So let's head here into local, let's head into modules, and let's, well, before we do that, let's just take one second to think about what it is that we want to do, right? So just like our buttons here have got a table that organizes all of their colors for them, wouldn't it be lovely and the answer is yes. If I could organize a table that had all of the colors for my background, my border A, and my border B information, so that rather than typing in numbers every time, I just have to give this a reference. I just need to tell this particular container where it needs to look for what its attributes are supposed to be. And in fact, that's what we're going to do. So here inside of local, inside of modules, we're going to add another text dat. And we're going to call this text at UI, because it's the user interface that we're going to start to noodle with. And here in UI, we're going to do just a few things. We're going to um, give this a few numbers. And we want to know, we want a, uh, some color information for our header background. We want our header border A and our header border B. And Rather than using a table, this time around we're going to use a set of lists. So lists happen inside of little brackets like this. We've done a lot of work with lists already, and we get to practice a little bit more. It's great. You'll grow to love lists. They're your favorite thing. Um, second only maybe to dictionaries. I know, I'm, I'm so sassy today, sorry. Okay, so let's plug some numbers in here. So I'm going to start with, and I've already like figured out what these colors are, right? Because the way that I did that was I used a constant chop, or excuse me, a constant dat, and brought up the colors, and I looked around and kind of like dialed in a color that I wanted and figured that out, and then there are my numbers, right? That's how I came up with these. You're welcome to come up with your own. Okay, so 0165, uh, 0292, 0241, and 0 0.8. And you'll notice here that I'm separating the, my list entries with commas. That's important to notice. Not periods. If you put in periods here, things are going to break. 048015, 0, 0503, 433, and 055. Last but not least, 0 0.8 is the opacity that I want here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just use the same border color again. Excellent. Let's just make sure that we're all set. Zero, point, point, comma, comma, comma. Let's make sure that all looks okay. So far, so good. All right, now here comes our moment of truth to see if we actually did this correctly. So if we're, we back out and we back out one more time and we come all the way over here to our header, let's start to put in some references. So me dot mod, right? Me dot module dot UI, and out of UI, I want header BG, and out of header G BG, I want the thing from the zero position in that list. <gasps> yes! Okay, now we've already done all this writing. Let's reuse it. Zero, one, two, three. Great, that's all of that information. Border. Border A, right? That's what we said. We can go ahead and reuse this thing. One, two, three. 
border B, let's get started here with border A, but that's just BB instead. We're going to copy that. So, you know, thinking about this, for one particular header, this is like a bit of work to do all of this to get us set up, but we can imagine that if we're building a complex user interface where you want to have absolute control over changing all these values, if we suddenly had, you know, even five or ten uh, headers spread out in a different, in various control panels, changing these values in all of those places could be really a nightmare and very frustrating. However, if we go ahead and rely on the fact that we can use modules as a place to store all of that information and then it will update for us, that gives us a way to kind of um, not cheat the system, but at least work, in, work around the fact that there's a bunch of things that we need to change and we don't want to go to each one of those things to actually make those changes. Okay, so now we should back out here and we can see that we've got a lovely little uh, audio control user interface. We can... Um, let's go ahead and view it. It's got a nice little header. It's got buttons that turn on and off. And it's uh, pretty well organized in here so far. So the next step for us is now to think about how we start to make some audio analysis. What is it that we're going to do to start to think about finding our, finding our highest mids and lows? Um, and how do we use that in a compelling, interesting, novel way? Okay, so that is what's up next. We are steaming right towards it, and I can't wait. All right, see you guys on the flip side.